And Dutva Infiltration, Infiltration is asking, what motivated upper caste Muslims across India? I think you mean to sacrifice. It's a sacrifice, but I think you, think you mean to sacrifice. Well, sacrifice that their lands. Okay, to sacrifice their lands, uh, pro their lands, property, inherited social hierarchy that they choose to partition India, but lower caste Muslims didn't, as Susanna has pointed out. Okay, so Susanna is not here, so I think we should revisit this question later. But so make sure you answer, ask that again and maybe phrase it a little bit better for next week. However, the way I think, if I remember correctly, um, was that the okay, when the partition was happening between Pakistan and India there was this understand there was this idea being spread around that the larger india like all of what was the greater india back then you know i mean pakistan bangladesh india all of that before it was all separated is divided between muslims and hindus you have like muslims and hindus and these are these two identities are so separate from each other so um i didn't you so so yeah so separate so divided that there's no way for you to create a nation for both of them to coexist at the same time okay but what is being said by some analysts and some other people is that the actual divide the actual divide was was not between hindu and muslim that was like a made up divide that was created by upper caste people because they wanted to become more powerful and more relevant right so the people that were pushing for india and pakistan there were upper caste hindus and upper caste muslims and yes caste was a thing among the muslim population in uh, in that area because of the influence of hinduism right so upper caste muslims and upper caste um hindus were trying to portray this as a muslim um hindu muslim divide not and not and completely side putting aside the lower caste muslims and Hin muslims and hindus and that so the, the 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 understanding is that the actual divide is between upper caste Hindus and Muslims and lower caste Hindus and Muslims, right? So a lower caste Hindu and a lower caste Muslim have way more in common, right? Than a lower caste Hindu and an upper caste Hindu. Like a lower caste Hindu and an upper caste Hindu's lives are so different that when you say like, oh, these two, these two groups of people have one Hindu identity, that just doesn't register, right? I have like the lower caste Hindu and an upper caste Hindu are living completely different identities. But a lower caste Hindu and a lower caste Muslim, they're living same, the same identities. So they had a lot more, much more in common with each other, right? Um, and, but, but this, but, the interesting thing is that is being pointed out is that the upper caste Hindus were not pointing out to the issue of lower caste Muslims because they know that they had that issue as well and they didn't want the Muslims to then point back at them and vice versa. The Muslims, the upper caste Muslims knew that the Hindus had that issue with their lower caste but they didn't want to point finger because they knew they had that issue as well. So they both pretended like this is something that the Hindus and Muslims want um, and the interesting thing is the argument is that Muslims did not want the lower caste Muslims did not want the partition, but their voices were not heard and the voices could, their voices were, were hard to be heard because they were not represented. They were less educated. Uh, they didn't have the outlets in their position to be able to make their voices heard and the people who knew of them completely ignored them on purpose. Right? 
so let me see actually i tried to ask about this um ask this from susanna just to make sure if she has anything to yeah because she's on her way but i asked her about this and she said the muslim league which is the gen okay so the muslim league okay the muslim league um believe that the muslims as a minority could never be properly protected in india okay so that was like the upper caste people hold on okay so susanna is saying they be, they didn't believe that muslims as a minority would be protected in a democracy with a hindu majority only 12 percent of muslims actually voted in the okay so only 12 percent of muslims actually voted in the election that influenced the decision to go into partition uh partially because of restrictions on who was allowed to vote and uh, land owning educated uh paying taxes etc like all these had an influence like yeah okay so that ex excluded the lower caste people with uh which disqualified most of the majority of the muslim populations were with there were lower caste and working class okay so yeah so the voting process that resulted in the part in the partition excluded excluded a lot of low caste muslims wow uh and saying they distrusted con con i don't know who she's referring to here when she says that they, they hold on they distrusted congress uh partly the the congress party because of elements within within it that advocated for hindu rashtra banning of cow slaughter etc congress failed to sufficiently this avow hindu uh communion okay so uh, Okay, so this is she's talking about the partition and stuff, but I actually wanted to hear more. Like, uh, maybe next time we will talk about. Maybe we'll do an entire stream dedicated to this because this is important, more, and not enough people talk about it. Um, I want to talk about the um, the groups of Muslims. I forgot what they were called. The Muslims that were being represented by the lower caste, and they were they were heavily pushing against the partition, but I. I want to read on their motivation. Why were they pushing against the partition, and why? What was what was the name of their organization? The name of the person. I know there was a specific person that was spearheading that, and why did they fail? And why were they ignored? And why did were they against the partition? That's a very interesting thing to study again. I remember reading about it, but then I forgot. So I need to reread about that. I mean, watching a video on it actually. It's the same thing. Have seen the content. Okay, let me see if I missed anything in life chat that I need to start for later. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me star some star some questions here. All right. Make sure you tag Atheist Republic if you want me to read. And make sure it's a question if you tag Atheist Republic. I don't. I'm not going to read comments, okay? Because we need to move on. Yep. Okay. Cool. 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 Uh, liberal liberal Hindu is saying Gandhi was very popular among lower caste Hindus, though he was alleged to be casteist. I mean, Gandhi went through certain a few character arcs. Like you can you can't say Gandhi was like this because Gandhi was at some point in his life was like this, and then eventually he became something else. So he evolved throughout his life. So I, I think it's not fair to like, Gandhi was like, at some point, Gandhi was racist, right? But then it's, I think it's unfair to Gandhi to just be like, oh, Gandhi was racist. Because that was like very early on during his life. <laughs> like he was a lot younger. I think like, I'm pretty sure none of us want to be judged by our thoughts right now 
10 years, even 10 years ago. <laughs> so I don't think it's fair to just paint him as racist just because he used to be, had some questionable quotes earlier when he was younger. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.